Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex. This is the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States of America. Once, once again, it's time for the lovely strains of Larry Bubbles Brown. And how are you going to depress us today, Larry? <laughs> well, let's see. Last time I depressed you on the economy. Now, uh, what could I dig up? Uh, you know, everything's fine. Well, well, didn't you used to say we're all going to die? We're all going to get old and die. Yeah, that, that's pretty much your theory in life, right? Well, we're halfway there now. We got we got the old covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got the old covered, and die is only a matter of whether you get the COVID or not. Yeah, I have just uh, I found out a couple of people I knew from comedy in the eighties. Just they were younger than me, just. They died this year. I just found out. And just every time you find out, you know, someone that died, it's kind of uh, it brings it home. When it happened, when I, you know, when I see friends who die, I go, "Well, there's another one." You know, like I had in my whole life, I had three best friends. Okay, two of them are now dead, and my third wow. one, my my other one, Shecky, I keep telling him, "You just better not fucking die." You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> Otherwise, I have nobody to call. And I want to meet Shecky. I've never met him. N- never met Shecky. No. He's, a, he's a legend. He's I, a, I want he, to see his baseball card collection. He, he, he supposedly got a great one. I wouldn't know. I don't care that much about baseball cards, but he tells me he has a a, a pretty great collection, you know. And he doesn't mm-hmm. sell any of this stuff. You know, I know guys who who collect this stuff, but then they sell them. They have a business out of it. He doesn't do that. I know a guy that's into into buying up. He buys he buys comic books, and then he holds on to them for like twenty years, and then he sells them, and he, he, he they sell for an incredible amount of money. You know that's smart. And uh, you know we always give him we always make a big deal about how dumb he is and blah 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 blah. He's smarter than the rest of us. He knew exactly <laughs> what to do. He bought up the stuff, you know, and all because he loved it, you know. So anyway, so did you I, ever have any of those uh, rare comics when you were a kid? Uh, the only thing rare in comics that I had, and then I I let them all go the way, you know. And the, Probably they wound up in a garbage can somewhere. Where I used to collect 3D comic books like crazy, and when I was a kid. And then when I got older and I was living in San Francisco, I started buying them back up. So yeah. somewhere I do have a nice collection of 3D comic books somewhere. Well, those got to be worth something. I have no idea. You know, uh, Shaky, who is into collecting stuff, says, says that to me that something is only worth as much as people are willing to pay for it. That's In true. other words, if something's rare, it's fine that it's rare. How much will it get? Well, it's only going to get as much as people are willing to pay for it. And if they, they're dying to have that, you know. Like I've got a postcard here from John Lennon. Okay, that John wrote a personal letter uh, note to me on a postcard, right? Mm-hmm. I have it framed. Uh, I don't know how much it's worth. I have no idea how much it's worth. It 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 has something where he talks about you know. I hope I was okay on your show. I had enough trouble last year. Uh, it it had some personal notes and then a little drawing that he put on there. Okay, so I don't know how much that's worth. Shecky one time told me it's probably worth about fifteen about twenty five thousand dollars. But we don't know that it's worth it today. You know, it's only, if I put it out there and I said, okay, who wants to buy this? Who's going to pay the most? Start bidding. Then I would have an idea of how much it's worth because it's only worth as much as people are willing to bid on. Yeah. 
Well, you should uh, you should see if there's any John Lennon mem memorabilia online. I, that's, that's what I should do. Yeah, yeah. Whoops! Somebody's calling me on my phone. But they, it, it's a. It, 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 do you hear that ring? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's off my watch. I forgot to put my watch on uh, on on uh, quiet. So let me just take it off and put just put it in my thing to recharge it because I have to recharge it every day. Anyway, so well that lead that lead that sounds like a great piece and to have that. Yeah, but you know people say, would you sell it? And I go, what? How much you want to pay? You know, um, if it's enough money, sure, I'll. I'll sell it. And people go, well, why would you sell it? I said, when I'm dead, it doesn't matter whether I have this or not. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it does it hold great memories for me? No, not really. You know, it's not a keepsake. You know, nothing like that. So if anybody wants to buy my postcard from John Lennon, 25 grand, <laughs> it's yours. You know? And there's also a... Uh something like that there's probably a, a time where that peaks because younger people probably don't even know who the Beatles are exactly exactly hey, Shecky said to me for some reason my audio stopped recording and we just picked it up so we were talking about John uh, Lennon's ghost stop the recording oh oh we were talking about kids remembering John Lennon and Shecky mentioned to me that there are people who don't even know who John Lennon was. Sure. You know, and you think about it and you go, well, man, what do you mean? Well, how, when did he die? He died maybe, what, 20 years ago? 1980. 1980. So 80? 40 years ago. For, he died 40 years ago? Yeah. Okay. So somebody who's 30 might not even know who John Lennon is or care who John Lennon is. Mm -hmm. Somebody forty probably wouldn't care who John Lennon is because he wasn't. He was just born at the time he died. So you know, oh yeah, I've heard those uh, Be Beatle records. You know, I know what they yeah. are. <laughs> but no, this this notion that everybody knows who John. Uh, you know, I used to say that I had a test for women I would go out with. They were too young if they couldn't name all four Beatles. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, because usually they got John, and they got Paul, and they got Ringo. But the one they hardly ever got was George. So if they couldn't name all four Beatles, that's it. Go somewhere else. I don't care how good you can blow me. I, you don't, you know, you don't get to that touch. That shows you, you how elusive fame is. That's uh well, I mean, we, we tend to think that certain people are, uh, I mean, we a lot of people like ourselves talk about Kennedy as president of the United States and blah, 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 and where were you when Kennedy died? Well, in most cases, uh, 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 most of the people around today uh, weren't even around when Kennedy was shot. So, you know, they don't have any waxing poetic about it. They go, uh, you know, Trump is the worst president we've ever had. But we've had some pretty bad presidents over the years. Oh, yeah, Warren Harding and uh, U.S. Grant. And... Yeah, the people you and I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that Harding was a real stinker. That was... <laughs> yeah, he was a real stinker. But I mean, Who died in San Francisco, by the way. Yes, so. he died at the St. Francis Hotel. Right. Some people believe he was murdered. Poisoned, yes. Yeah, poisoned. He was in a tri on a trip to Alaska. Was that it? Right. Good knowledge. And he died in uh, right here on. And did he get sick when he got to San Francisco, or was he? I sick? think he was. I think he got sick on the ship, and they brought him in here. And yeah. A little murky, as I recall. What? But they he took... was. He was involved in a huge uh, scandal, the Teapot Dome, and. Yeah, but but, but here's the here, here's the question. If if he was dying on the boat, they took him to the St. Francis Hotel. You know, the St. Francis, or was it the other one? I think it was the St. Francis Hotel. Oh, Palace Hotel. It was the Palace Pal Hotel. Yeah, that was it. Right. Yeah, the St. Francis Hotel was Fatty Arbuckle. 
That was our buckle. They didn't need another. <laughs> about the same time, too. They didn't need another one of those. <laughs> another person, by the way, that nobody out there remembers. And quite frankly, I wouldn't remember it if I weren't so obsessed with what went on before I was born. So I knew about it. You know, I knew about it. You know film. so much about film, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But the average person, there, there are people who I was talking about, Dana Carvey was on some road trip. We were talking about some of these, like Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart, these people that have made an amazing number of films, and no one knows who they are now. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and he, you know, um, uh, and most people don't know. If I said to a kid today, uh, Jimmy Stewart, they go, huh? Yeah. You know. Alfred Hitchcock. Meet Alfred Hitchcock movies. Who's that? You know, I mean, we take for granted that the whole world knows this stuff. I'll tell you what I always found, always endeared me to somebody. I had a girlfriend who knew a lot about what went on before she was born because she had an older brother who told her about it. And then okay. she was also interested in what went on before she was born. And I well, was the good. same way, you know. I mean, I, uh, uh, I, I, sure, I was born in 1939, the best year ever for movies, by the way. Um, that was I can can you name like I think I can name I know you can. Well, I can name uh, of course. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's begin with Gone with the Wind. Gone Wizard, with the Wind. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Mr. Can, Smith. Uh, I don't. I can't remember. And um, was Casa, Casablanca was forty one. Uh, Maltese Falcon was not then. I'm trying to think of all the films that happened there, but there's a list of like about 20 films, 20 great films. That that year was a banner year for great movies. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't going to remember them particularly because I was, uh, I think Citizen Kane may have come out in, in 39. No, it's 41. 41? Okay. Anyway, maybe I'm going to backtrack now on 1939 being the best year ever for films. Uh, but no, it no, was. thirty-nine was. But I mean, when you think like a couple of years, a couple of years later, you had Casablanca and Citizen Kane. What a, what a great era for movies! Uh, it, it, well, that, it was the the best time ever for for creativity in film, you know. Uh, and, but also, you got to remember, at that period of, in that period of time, there was a massive there was a massive amount of output. I mean, it was just in, extraordinary. Um, and, and, uh, so because of that massive amount of output, you had to have a massive amount of decent pictures. I mean, you got to remember when movie companies made movies, do you know how many, how many feature films they made a year? One a week. A week? I mean, wow. I mean, they released one a week because what would happen is they would, they would sell, you know, they would uh, have theaters play a movie. And then they had to have a movie to replace it. And movie theaters like to do a turnover every week. In fact, sometimes they did a turnover twice a week. I remember my local theater, Marin, uh, I think had a turnover of three films a week. In other words, uh, uh, three double features a week. Uh, so there, there was a massive amount of stuff coming out. I think they said in the 30s, 100 million people would go to the movies every week. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was the television of the time, you know, so. Mort Saul told me, he said the writers were great. He said most of them were communists, but they were great writers. <laughs> most they of them were right. communists, but they were great writers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, 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 people in Hollywood were lefties. You know, yeah. I mean, Ronald Reagan was a fucking communist for a while. Yeah, apparently. for a while there. <laughs> yeah, and then he went and turned everybody in, and so he suddenly became okay. You know, not great, not great. You know, but anyway, so you're uh, you're you're surviving the COVID. I'm surviving the COVID, waiting waiting to see if they're going to up the unemployment, which. Uh, yeah. Well, you certainly are unemployed. Yeah, I mean, there's nowhere to work, so. Yeah, but, you know, uh, you get to work here. 
I do. Uh, and we're paying you the big gab net bucks. You're the only one that'll have me, so I, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, are you worried that if you ever have to go back to work, you, you don't know how to do it anymore? Uh, I know I'm worried because I, I've done a couple of, I did a set last week, an outdoor show, and yeah, and I was I was pretty much lost at ten minutes. So. Yeah, if you don't if you don't use it, you lose it. It's a very yeah. Common. Most every time I get no one's gone like four months without doing a set, and now everyone's freaking out. Right. Well, before the recording stops again, why don't we just stop it voluntarily and get back to this in another week or so? We we shall. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Ah. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Uh, there's something smelling here. <laughs> I, I'm okay. Here's what happens uh, when I'm uh, not uh, doing the program. When I'm when I'm playing like Larry Bubbles Brown, I go to the bathroom and I go and I sit there and I make sure I pee and so on. Uh, mainly because uh, with this whole prostate thing that happened to me, every now and then I will get this urgency to urinate. So if I if I do it, I feel that if I do it like while the interview is on, I'm fine, right? So I'm in there, and all of a sudden a light goes out, right? Uh, I don't know where. I haven't figured it out, and uh, I look at uh, I. I I, I don't know where it's coming from. All I'm hearing then, I'm hearing cracking, creaking. And I look up at the, uh, I, we have the sconce, right, with two lights in it in the bathroom. And one of them isn't lit, and smoke is coming out of it. So I, uh, I, I quickly stopped doing what I was doing and walked there and undid the, the uh, bulb, which was red hot now these are leds and they don't get red hot there was smoke coming out of the top of it apparently one of these leds decided to blow and boy oh and there's still it it, it let out with this kind of electronic uh, electric smell and i got this electric smell going on here and i can smell it right now i mean it's it's pathetic so anyway, uh, that's my uh, my story. And so then I went and I got a, another uh, LED bulb, an, a newer one, newer kind, and I put it in there. But it's higher than the sconce, than the, the thing that, hold, you know, yeah, okay. So uh, I had to go find another one that was like the one that just burnt out, so I put that in there. Uh, the reason I have these things in there is they use up less electricity than a regular light bulb, and I figure I'm saving some money, okay? But, man, I'm still, the smell is still, it, 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 you know, electric smell, and it, it just not, is not going away. Uh, but I, the, the sconce is fine. I put in a new bulb, work fine. Okay. Anyway, also, here's my newest, uh, this is the second pair of these I bought in a month. These are the Sound Pete's. Uh, earphones, okay, and I have gotten to the point, and that's where the light changes when I get up close, I've gotten to the point where I just love these earphones so much that every time they come out with a new a new uh, version of it, I have to get it, and this one is uh, lighter and smaller, and it also has these little sponge uh, things that I can squeeze and put in my ear, and they don't fall out. Because the regular things do make it fall out of my ears. But the sound on this is incredible. And I don't know why anybody, they, they cost, this cost me uh, 40 bucks. 40 bucks. That's it. Plain and simple. $40. And um, uh, I don't know why anybody goes out and pays like $200 for those stupid uh, iPhone, you know, earplugs. Because the sound, I can't imagine the sound being better than this. I mean, the sound isn't going to be any better than MP3s are, which is really, if you've ever, if you ever heard uh, CDs and then before that 78s and 33 RPMs and so on, uh, uh, MP3 is really crappy sound, but we've learned to dumb our hearing down. 
Anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to open up our uh, our <coughs> Zoom line. See, I got a cough from this too. Um, you know, I a boy is it was it incredible. Hello, guys. How are you this hey. evening? Uh, uh, we had a gas leak. Uh, 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 wait a minute. First of all, Jeff, uh, move your camera so we can see your face. <laughs> You're getting to look like Tony. <laughs> there we go. It's, it's what we call the Tony effect. Wait a minute. You had a gas leak, right? Yeah, we beat your smell. We had a gas leak. Luckily, I was in the building, like one exit down for a big for this this thing that we're doing. But I guess over at Twin Creeks, where they play all the bas all the baseball games, they release. They have you know the San Bruno fires. They have PG&E has to do some some purging of lines, and so they are purging these big twelve inch. 12 foot uh, uh, lines or something, but it sounded like a jet. They said they were releasing those valves wow. and the smell went right across the street and right to our building. So we had to evacuate our building. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I wasn't there and I don't manage those guys anymore. So oh. I was still I'm smiling oh. in the penthouse in building eight smiling. Oh, okay. All right. That was at work, right? Not at home. Yeah. Not at home. Yeah. At work. Yeah. Well, this thing, I don't understand it. I mean, these things don't burn hot. You can put your hand on them, right? Mm. This thing mm. did whatever it did, and smoke started coming out of it. And that, uh, that was making ozone. I I undid it and put it down, and it was burn. It's still burning hot in there. I was going to bring it in here and show it to you, and I couldn't really pick the thing up. It started smoking. What do you say, ozone? Yeah, that's the electric smell. And you get a short or something like that. The electricity makes oh, oxygen three, three oxygen molecules. You mean in the bulb. Yeah, because that's where the electrical short was. I'm sure. Because I put it, I put a new bulb in there, and it's working fine. You know, it's not the, it's yeah. not the sconce. It, it's the, uh, it's the bulb. Yeah. Uh, so I put another one just like it in there, so they can, it can blow too like that. But in I mean, about ten years. Yeah, but I mean the smoke that came out of it. I mean, come on. I thought these at least with old light bulbs, the worst they ever did was sometimes they shattered, you know. Yeah. Uh, so oh well. Uh, As a kid working on cars in high school all the time, you know, we'd go replace our stereos, and man, one of those things would short out, and all the smell from that the plastic, you know, on the insulation, mm -hmm. and you'd be cruising, acting all badass, and then all of a sudden, all this smoke just starts coming from the bottom of the dash. Wow, this is the worst. By the way, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you remember last night's show? Any of you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did anything horrible go on on the show last night? Anything? No. Anything? Oh. That would make a sponsor unhappy. All of no, a sudden, Ludwig was not on the show. Yeah, they they de they one. demonetized that episode. The one the, the not the one they recorded. That one didn't did got monetized. <laughs> mm. the, this time it was the recorded one, and uh, I'm trying to think, what do we do that would be unacceptable? So two nights ago was okay, but last night was bad. Two nights yeah, ago was okay, ago, but last yeah. night was bad. And two only nights ago, Brian was on. Only one of the two versions. I'm just thinking of stopping the whole monetization thing and saying, screw them. You know, screw them. Because they do make some money off of me when I monetize. They make a lot of money because they get the majority of it. You yeah, know, sure. they, they run the commercials. You know. Funny. Uh, but I, you know what makes me mad, though? Please, people, if you if you're if you're on um, uh, uh, what do you call it? on on, uh, uh, on uh, YouTube, uh, don't say that you want to have three, you know, a commercial in the middle of the show, because <laughs> it oh, they always drop it in some place where it's completely out of context. You know, mm -hmm. the guy be saying, and then I went to the. And then all of a sudden, here comes an ad for insurance. And you go back to it, and he finishes the story. I mean, just don't. You can, you can control that. You don't have to ask for it. Today, I was watching um, Cuomo, his daily thing. In the middle of it is a commercial. And I'm going, why did the state of New York decide to say, okay, let's do a commercial? You know? Hey, look who's here. 
Was it Mario Cuomo? <laughs> Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Here's owner, ladies and gentlemen. Control back. Wait, 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 what do you, who's got sound going on there? Homer. Uh, anyway. Now, now. Eldridge. Anyway, uh, I, I wish everybody would put their real names up there because I'm getting old and I just can't remember <laughs> names. Okay. You know. All right. My name is Jaime Schwartz. Yeah. Well, just, <laughs> well, 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 I can do something. In fact, I did it to that guy who no longer calls the program. And I, I change. I can go in and change your names if I want to, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, I, on his, I changed it to asshole, and I don't think he knows I did it. And I'm sure anytime he uses Zoom now, it says asshole. So, yeah. But no, I have the power to change your names. Let's see. Brian Neary is using Brian Neary, and Jason is using uh, owner. <laughs> the Mexicans have taken back. I'm the, the owner the Mexican now. Mexicans have taken. <laughs> Mexicans have taken back. Boy, mm. yeah. Hello, well, John Larkin. How are you doing there in San Francisco in the Tenderloin District? Oh, I'm okay. I just was watching this uh, this thing on um, HBO called Agents of Chaos. Yeah. It's pretty good. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, um, What's it about? About the Russian interference. Oh, in the oh, that's the thing that the Gibney did, Alex Gibney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I want to watch that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, boy, I, the smell is still here. How long is that going to stick around, Charlie? <laughs> well, to air the place out, open up all the windows. Oh, jeez. I mean, I got a fan in here. It's in. It was in the other room, and the smell came in here. Son of a bitch. Anyway. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, I've been want wanting to watch that. Um, Good. Um, let me see here. What, what else was uh, what I was doing today is I, I have this video game I bought months ago. And uh, they say if you start at the beginning of this video game and you're good at it, it'll take you 60 hours. And uh, I, I stopped playing it for a while because I got to a point where I hit this one place where these people were always killing me, always killing me, always killing me. I just got tired of it. And I figured, go away for a while, you come back to the game, and you can get right through it. And sure enough, went back to the game. These guys attack me. Boom, boom, boom. I shoot them. I leave. You know, and we go on with the game. But so I start playing these things, and all of a sudden I notice I start at one in the afternoon, and now it's six. It, Marjorie is saying, "Time for dinner, dear." <laughs> you know, you get so into this, and on top of that, I've been having this thing lately where I'm lightheaded and tired, tired, and so on. I get so loopy from playing these things. Uh, I, and it was the same way a year ago too. I mean, it just absolute. But I, I just can't stop. So I'm back to playing this game, and uh, you know, what is it? It's called uh, the 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 Last of Us Part Two. I didn't play Part One, and it is probably the best-selling game in the world right now. You're it's, a PS4 person, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and it is. Uh, in fact, HBO is making it into a series. I mean, it, it, you know, th people don't realize this. Marjorie goes, "Are you going to play your little game?" She thinks I'm playing Pong. You know, <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry to begin with. I have carpal tunnel syndrome here going on from the boom boom, uh, and I have to inform her that it really they're a little more sophisticated than that now. It's like you're watching a movie, like you're playing a movie. You are the movie, and it has a plot and everything. You know. And um, so, and the you know the people on the screen look so real. Uh, it, it's it's in, it's really incredible. Yes. Well, would you think um, if somebody who's never ever played any video games, maybe like Pac-Man or something like that, would somebody like like that's me? Would I be able to get into it? Would I be able to play it? I don't know if you'd want to. You know, I mean, I, I, I'll tell you how I got hooked on these. I, I like the. Uh, First, Tomb Raider. Uh, well, the first person games where they go through an adventure or something like that and they have to do things. 
And the one that I started out with years ago, and it was just a stick figure, was Tomb Raider. And then it got more sophisticated, more yeah, sophisticated. Yeah, you just like bend her over looking at her ass. Right. You can make her go back and forth <laughs> and everything. But then it, it got so sophisticated that, I mean, it was like I, we, I was in a real world, you know. And you had to learn how to jump up to things and swing across stuff. This is more of a first-person shooter game. Uh, and fighting game where you're you're in this world which has gone into chaos. There seemed to have been a virus, I think. That, uh, oh, oh. And uh, uh, that's me. That's you. Is did, yeah. did your Roblox dog... Roblox with Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh boy. That's as sophisticated as I get. She plays Roblox and I play with her. She's yeah. Anyways, I um um. I got really got into the, doing these first person, what I call first person shooters. They're not really that, but they're adventure games. They really have to solve puzzles and figure out how you're going to get through this and how you're going to get out of this building. And you know, in some cases, you got to fight the zombies. Other ones, you got to fight the the bad people. Uh, and uh, I have I've been into that for maybe the last twenty years, twenty five. That's my little secret. I never talk mm. about it on the air much. But I really enjoy playing these kinds of games. But there aren't enough of these, the kinds of games I like. You know, some of them, to begin with, are badly done. You know, and most of them don't have a story. It's just like, you know. Uh, well, that's why you need to get the Xbox, too, so you can do Halo. I, 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 I don't want Halo. I saw, I've seen Halo. Halo. Is awesome. Like, like, I got out of video games. I went, when I was a kid, you know, it was a Nintendo, and you just yeah. had... A, B, you know, up, down, left, right. Yeah, I, mean, I was fine yeah, with that. Yeah. But then when you started getting the multiple joysticks, I, you know, I'm the generation like where I didn't get introduced to computers until a certain time. And then mm -hmm. it just, it became too complicated. And then as I became an adult, then it almost became second nature. You know, now I have, I'm working two joysticks, six buttons, and then you got two on the top also. <laughs> it's just, it's so much crap going on, but then it becomes second nature. Yeah. Well, you know, you're going boom, 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 you know. Uh, and in this case, we've also got zombies that are just, you know, they, they, the people who, are, who survive the virus. <laughs> <laughs> survive Trump. Yeah. Oh, boy. It, uh, you know, but I mean, I, that's been my little secret all these years. So, that I play these games. Uh, but, uh, you know. Uh, it, I, I like to be in a world that's slightly more apocalyptic than the one I live in. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out now that it's less All apocalyptic out. than the world I live in right now. So, yeah. you know. Simon's playing Fallout 76 for a while. Now he's playing Call of Duty. But he's got one of those keyboards that's annoying. You know what? The clickers? Yeah. Really loud clickers. What, did did he do it on a, on a PC? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do mine on... Uh, PlayStation, yeah. Mm. I, I went to PlayStation because uh, that was the one I've always used, you know. And but see, you, Mister Gadget Man, you'd think like you'd have a PlayStation in one room and you'd have an Xbox in the other room I, just to compare them. I, I don't want. I, I don't need both. I mean, most games come out on both. Okay. Um, this game um, came out, I think, first on PlayStation. Uh, but it is. It's you know. I mean. The work that goes into it and these worlds they create now, you know, I mean, they're they're whole worlds, uh, and I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm I'm absolutely gobsmacked by the fact that they can even create these things, and these make more money than movies. Yeah, a good video game will clear several uh, billion billion dollars. Yeah. And they don't pay their people for shit well, either. Well, they're though. 59 oh. bucks a piece to begin with, although in this case you got, you know, 50 hours of entertainment, okay, and then you can play it again at a higher level and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I mean, a lot of work has gone into these things. Now, what they're doing is they're taking a chance because they're spending, I think this game may have cost them something like $300 million to put together, maybe more, yeah. okay? So you're taking a chance that you're going to spend that $300 million, you're going to put it out on the market, and it's just going to lie there on the shelves. You know. So uh, 
like a movie. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it, it is. It, 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 they are movies, but they're movies that you're in, okay, that you're participating in. And that's what's so, uh, I think, incredible about them. Hmm. Uh, but anyway. Uh, I'm, afraid I'd, huh? I'm afraid I'd go and buy a Xbox or whatever the other thing is called, and then I'd play it for like five minutes and go, fuck, this thing's too hard, forget it. And it just collect dust. When Xbox first came out, that's what I did. <laughs> I bought it and I, <laughs> I bought one game. I'm like, dude, this is like this is too much for me. You know, just too much going on in my life too. I'm like, they're yeah, not that's... they're not easy. Even I do mine at the lowest level. I do my you know, they have like, you know, difficult and uh, or uh, you know, combat hero and blah 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 blah. Mine is one the level called Pussy. And um <laughs> uh, uh, it, it, um, I, you know, I mean, I don't want, I want a challenge, but I don't want that much. This is enough of a challenge. I mean, even the lowest level. So if you just started tomorrow, John, I think you might have some problems unless you go, I'm going to beat this damn thing. I'm going to make this work. You Do you know? ever play destiny? Cause I think that's on uh, PS4 too. Uh, destiny. That's a pretty good one. It's a first person shooter. Yeah. No. Gee, where's Robert tonight? Robert's usually here every night. God, I get worried early. about you when I, huh? Yeah, he's always early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, usually he's one of the first ones here. But, but you know, he probably had something to do tonight. He probably had, guess what? He may have a life. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, uh, but anyway. Um, so our president, Oh God! Oh, what's you know, I don't. Yeah, you know, I. I would like to not talk about it, <clears throat> but let's face it: the man is just going off the rails. Yep. You know, uh, and uh, and if anybody, by the way, again, if anybody disagrees with me or disagree, thinks Trump is just the knees bees, please call the program. I would like to hear from you. I. And, but I can't imagine anybody, unless they're a complete, utter moron, thinking that what this man's doing is all right. You know? He said the election's rigged unless he wins. Yeah. Basically, and they asked him, would you allow for a, uh, a, a, a transition of power? Peaceful. To go peaceful on. Peaceful transition of and power. Peaceful yeah. transition of power to go on. And he said... I can't say. Yeah. You can't say? The one because thing we take pride in, that we've taken pride in since the forming of the Constitution, yep. Yep. was the peaceful transition of power from one president to another. And you're telling us that you're going to violate that spirit? I mean, come on. He goes, we got to get rid, if we get rid of the ballots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't let people yeah. vote, yeah. You I'll know, accept those results. Listen, he knows he's going to lose. The Republicans know he's going to lose. I mean, my proof, I've, I said this last night, my proof that uh, he's going to lose yeah. is the fact that the Republicans think he's going to lose. Otherwise, they wouldn't have cared about pushing through the Supreme Court nominee at this point. They just mm -hmm. say, yeah. oh, we'll wait till after the election when he's president again, and then we'll do it. All right? But no, they know he's not going to win. And if they're going to get that rigged court in place, they better do it now because he's not going to be able to do it uh, uh, after he's uh, literally been kicked to the curb. And if that's one thing, you know, if he even had any type of inkling that he was going to win, he'd probably sit there and be like, look, I'm going to be the good guy. You know, you guys want to wait until the next election, you know, Fine, I'll wait until you know January. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, win. I'm gonna win. Yeah, yeah. I'll make my. But my no, what, but he's it. already admitting he's gonna lose. But what is he saying about his loss? That his loss is gonna be because we, because we're all Democrats here, rigged the election. Well, he's working hand over fist to rig the election in his favor. Yeah. Well. Of you know, I mean, if he says this election's rigged, he said that last time. He said last time that, oh, I, you know, 
uh, blah, 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 and then he won. So if it was rigged, I guess it was. Yeah, you yeah, know? Was. I mean, I just... Like, huh? They're gonna rig he says that he's going to lose the first debate also because they're going to give him hard questions and Biden easy questions. It's like, don't they answer the same questions anyway on the debates? Yeah, the hard questions. Same subjects. Uh, Mr. Trump, what's your first name? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, uh, Mr. Trump, what daughter haven't you fucked? Oh, yeah. What, what did they say about the... Didn't he say something about they asked Hillary the easy questions in the debate last time or something? He was complaining about that. That's yeah. why he's complaining about the debate already. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. Just amazing. Hard to believe. I, you know, yes, Jeff. Yeah, I talked to... Uh, somebody who lives in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, we, we need to find somebody who's a Republican who can be on the show with us. Okay, because I know you've been looking to find somebody, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I asked her, because she lives in Florida. She ought to know a bunch of people. She goes, oh yeah, I know a whole bunch of them. But they won't talk to you. I said, why not? Because all they really care about is religious stuff, people Racial. getting, you know, having children, mm -hmm. and finances. And they they don't care about Trump. It's just kind of like I mean, they care the about they Trump. I mean, they're for Trump. Yes, but that happens to be that guy. I mean. It's almost it's a like it's a philosophical They're for approach. white America approach. Yeah. Screw the Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, I you know, I just I don't understand how anybody with half a brain could even find this guy acceptable in his behavior. I mean, he's literally saying that if he doesn't get elected, he's gonna fight it. And he's going to use his full power to stay in office. Now, yep. what's that all about? Well, so I hope we do too. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Did you see him at the? Did you see him at the R Ruth Bader Ginsburg's uh, yeah, coffin? Yeah, you got booed. <sighs> I've never heard in my lifetime a president get booed. No. Has anybody ever heard a president get booed? Yeah, remember, remember when he was at the all the I mean the World Series game last year, or was it maybe it might have been the you know it was last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was last year at the playoffs or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When and the Washington, Washington uh, team, and he was got playing. his ass booed. So then he had to go to uh, one of those UHF or those wrestling things, mm -hmm. and and they they kind of cheered and booed him there. So then he had to go to fucking where was it? Uh, Tuscaloosa, some. You know NASCAR race. NASCAR, yeah. Some Ku Klux Klan it. It, it meeting. Was a, it was a college football game of like Alabama and Arkansas or something, and he finally got cheers there. <laughs> no, folks, you know I don't like sitting here every night bashing him, but there's nothing yeah. else I can do. I mean, my brain will not allow me to give this guy a pass. Uh, I mean, and he. It's almost like he likes it. You know, somebody was on uh, MSNBC tonight, which I, I'm getting to hate MSNBC. Uh, uh, he was on tonight complaining, or not complaining, but saying that he thinks that underneath that, uh, that mask, you know, uh, he was wearing, he wore a mask for the, one of the few times, you know, I guess because liberals are infected. Um... Uh, Around a dead lady, he finally Around wears a, a dead mask. lady, yeah. he wears a Jeez. mask. Oh. Um, but it, but underneath that mask, this guy said, "I bet he was smiling." Because why did he go to this thing? He he didn't go to uh, what's his name's funeral, no. the senator. Uh, he went to this one. He went to this one. It was outdoors, where there was going to be uh, a whole bunch of people who were liberals who he knew were going to boo him. And I think he wanted to do it because he enjoyed getting a rise out of them. It's a power play. It's a power play, yeah. And I think we got to be careful about playing into him, you know? Yeah, we've been playing into him for four years. Yeah. 
Yeah. The media should have fucking ignored his ass a long time ago. Well, I don't know if booing him was good on their part or bad on their part, and I'm not talking about right or wrong. I'm yeah. talking about politically. You know, did that reinforce the people who are for him? Yeah, it might antagonize them and make them more crazy. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know, my theory is there's no way he's going to win this election. I mean, there's no way legally he's going to win yeah. this election. Uh, I see a real route happening, and it's happening for this reason. It's not a Hillary prediction or route or whatever. Oh. It is the fact that um, there are so many people intent on not seeing him be president for another four years that there's going to be an incredible turnout. They say this may be the biggest turnout in the history of an American election, presidential election. Yeah. And traditionally, we don't come out in great force. Uh, if that's the case, it's not because Republicans are turning out because they want to return this guy to office and they're so enthusiastic about him. It's because there are so many people out there who want to say, we can't stand you. You know, you cannot get away with this for four more years. So, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, whatever. What, where, it's kind of quiet tonight. What's, where is everybody? Mm. Have they all given up on me, finally? I mean, I hope so, because then I can stop doing this thing and I can have my nights back. <laughs> you know, if you want to call us, you just go to gabnet.net, and over there on the right-hand side of the page is a column, and in the middle of that column it says in big letters, if you want to call us during the show, click here to Zoom, and you click there, and you Zoom. It's just automatic. You don't have to have Zoom in your machine or anything. Yes, Charlie. By the way, here comes Bree. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna. Oh, I was gonna mention that uh, you realize that with RBG gone, Affordable Care Act is toast. Well, November, you know, some November the tenth, the Supreme Court's going to be taking you know yeah, hearings yeah. about we, that. I'll tell you, we don't know that, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, who voted for the Affordable Care Act last time it came? It was out? Roberts. Yeah. And that yeah. made it 5-4. Yeah. yeah. That's the only thing that saved it was Roberts voting. Well, I think Roberts probably figures, hey, you know, there's something that they do have in the Supreme Court, and the newer people maybe aren't into that, but what they, uh, what they believe is that if, there's a certain amount of case law, like Roe versus Wade is so old now that it's considered case law. And they don't want, they're very reticent to change something like that. It's been in, 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 enacted years ago. Uh, yes, Jason. The lower, co the lower court already voted down. Yes, so if it's a tie, that's the ruling that stands. Or it's even gone. if uh, Roberts gone. decides that he doesn't want to take the case on at all. What, which is it? What is this? If I'm saying if Roberts decides doesn't... he doesn't want to take it on because Again, the they, they can sit case... there and say, that I'm not going to take the case on at all, just like, you know, a presidential election. Then that means election, the lower ruling, lower ruling, ruling stands. Stands. Yeah. stands, yeah. They've actually got to take it on and say no to it for the lower, case, lower court ruling to go down. Well, you got to remember, Roe versus Wade happened because there was a suit. Yeah. And then that suit worked its way to the Supreme Court. And at that time, the Supreme Court dictated that Roe versus Wade be the law of the land, that it was le legal and legitimate. Um, the, the, the Supreme Court is rather reticent to overrule an original court decision. In other words, if, if they do that, then anything they do can be overridden. And anything the next court does can be overridden. It really, right. you should look at things that were passed in the past, taken care of in the past, and uh, honor that court's decision. You may disagree with it today, but nevertheless, you can't bring the question up again when it was solved once before before the Supreme Court. So that's why Roe versus Wade may not become a problem. Now, so far as the Affordable Care Act is concerned, yeah, that's relatively new. Uh, let's say we get Biden as president. Let's say we get a Democratic Senate. All this, by the way, very possible. 
There's a yeah. very, very big possibility that this is going to happen. Uh, he can sit there and start doing exactly what he wants to do on his own. You know, he can start. To, he, let, let's say they, the Supreme Court says the Affordable Care Act is toast. Bye. He can come along with a brand new act and get it passed by his Congress and by his Senate without even breathing heavy, and it probably would be more draconian than, uh, than Obamacare. This will be a real nightmare, you know, for the, uh, for the, for the right-wingers. So, um, and also there's the other factor that we've been talking about. Biden says he probably won't do it, but now he's kind of hedging on whether he would do it or not that he can add two more seats, three more seats if he wants to, oh, yeah. to the Supreme Court, and then put liberals in there and even the whole thing out, you know. So all these things are rectifiable, but we're going to have to go through a lot of, as my mother used to call it, surus to solve the problem, you know, that this disaster that the Republicans have been making. And by the way, folks out there listening, when you lose your insurance, uh, please uh, remember the Republicans did it. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, when if if Roe versus Wade is overturned in any way, which I doubt, just remember who did this. Okay. This is Republican doing. When uh, Social Security and Medicare get unfunded, Republicans did it. Remember that. Yeah. Uh, and don't forgive them, by the way. Uh, and uh, don't forget, don't forgive Donald Trump either, uh, because it's 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 just it's terrible. It's just terrible. It's te but what's happened to this country is what is so onerous, you know. Uh, and that is that we now have someone who is approaching the attitude of a dictator. Yeah. Do you disagree with me, Bree, on that? I mean, he's been, you know, I mean, this latest thing is so, sm well, smells so much like Banana Republic to me, you know. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I've said it before, a lot of people just don't think that our government has been working for them, and they're disheartened, and they're disgruntled, and you know, I, I used the example before. If you have somebody parked in front of your driveway, you want that car moved, especially if you got to get going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Biden and our pre and previous governments, they're always like, well, we better call this department and they be they'll call them. And Trump would be like, move the car now. I will call the tow truck. I'll help you move it. Well, that's the kind of guy, it may be illegal, but that's the kind of guy that people want at that moment. And that's kind of how I see it. Unfortunately, that's his con, though. He he acts like that, but in fact, he can't. He doesn't do anything because he has no authority. Yeah, yeah. He, he acts like he does, but he does. You know, he's too incompetent to do anything. Yeah. Well, I but mean, I, he, I don't think he try and move the car, and it end up in your living room. <laughs> no. yeah. I don't I think, think he's that. incompetent. I, I just think that he. Mm. Oh, he he's incompetent. Wait a so minute, Bree. He's uh, incompetent. He bankrupted a casino. Yeah. How do you do that? Be more uh, incompetent. I think he he uses the system to its maximum availability. So if if you got a problem with that, you have a problem with the system because he's good at playing the system. Did they say that there was somebody said, and I don't know where I heard this, that since he's come into office, he's two billion dollars richer. Yeah, he's used it to amass this huge fortune. Yeah. Well, well uh, and Hillary Clinton career. and Bill Clinton didn't make any money. Well, no, no, they oh, made it. They, they, the they, 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 well, they made it after, after the resorts. They, yeah, made, they made they, it after. They made it after the fact, not while they were president. While they were president, in fact, they were bankrupt yeah. because of all the money they had to put out to defend Bill against all those yep. charges and the, the impeachment and all of that. It was only afterwards that they got their ass in gear and they made uh, did speeches and this speeches and that. And, and, and I mean, every president after the president do do make a lot of money. The Obamas are uh, making. Uh, they've got a like I don't know hundred million dollar deal with Netflix. You know, I mean, 
and, and uh, that's how they how they monetize their being president. But they're not doing it while they're president. While they're uh, the Obamas did it while they were president, but no. You know, what did how? How do they do it, stuff. Jason? They didn't do books, anything, wasn't it? What? They wrote, they wrote some books. No, while he they wrote were a president. book. He wrote a book before he became president. No. That was not released while he was president. But Trump's got his resorts that they stay at, and all the security, yeah, and yeah. everybody, everything else. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have a different opinion for you guys because I think all politicians try to make money all the time. You know, so if Trump make some money that's every human being goes. tries to make money all the time <laughs> well you try to make money all the time i try to make money all the yeah, time yeah but you don't you don't you don't you don't gin the game in yeah. your favor while you're president no nope. you know but, and, but that's what i say with the obama was if it was writing a book i mean it's not like it's, uh, you know i mean there's no question the fact that you get a guy and he doesn't isn't doing too well he's doing so so and he becomes senator uh, and the first couple of years he's a senator, he's sleeping in his office at the Capitol. You know, that's how how much money he's got in his pocket. But somehow he's there 20 years, and now he's worth several million dollars. How did that happen? You know. Insider trading. Insider trading. Which they, which they, I think, can do. I don't know anymore, but yeah, up until the last couple of years. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'm reaching for my soda. It's an apple. Uh, so, you know, I mean, but, I mean. Uh, uh, but, he, you know, yeah. Yeah, all politicians, you know, you know, make try to make money. But they're not supposed to make money off of, you know, by selling their, their you know, their, their power that they have. And that's essentially what Trump is doing. You know, he's, yeah. he's basically, you know, maybe that's the time we live in. Well, I mean, he, for instance, he was never willing to show us his taxes, which most yeah. people running for president do. It's almost considered obligatory. And so you used to be in a money launderer. You do different things than. The well, other. what I'm saying is, is we don't know about his finances and we don't know how, yeah. how, uh, you know, uh, well, we're what no, kind of no. deals he's making? We don't know if he's doing business dealings now because he never put his his stuff in a blind trust, which most yep. presidents do. Well, we know we know we know from the New York Times reporting that uh, that came out when when was it last year that he's been a tax fraud his whole life. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. he's, he's literally he's going to go to jail for that when he's when he's out. Of office, no, so he, he will go to jail. Well, it, it, it will uh, not go into it, jail. Um, Cone. He hit the biggest payoff, the president. Yeah, Cone, uh, his friend Cone, what was his first name? Uh, yeah, Cohen, yeah. Myron Cone. <laughs> no. Uh, oh. Um, oh, you're talking about Roy Cone. Roy Cone. Yeah, yeah. Um, taught him. I mean, he was, you know, he was Roy Cone's sensei. You know, yeah. Uh, and Roy Cohn that told him a couple of things. Num a couple of things is, you never admit you're wrong. That's one rule. And yeah. the other one is, you never pay your bills. You yeah. never pay your bill. Roy Cohn owed money all over town, and he would just tell people, "Go screw yourselves." I'm Roy yeah. Cohn. And that's exactly what Trump did. Trump, uh, Trump never paid off his bills. Ask the people who worked on his casinos yeah. and so on, who wound up yeah. not getting paid. The, con the that's construction true. Yeah. That's engineers. the illegal immigrants that he hired to build his buildings. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I mean, they didn't get paid. Uh, you know, so he. This is the way he's always operated. And and you know, for somebody who said, "Oh, you know, I'm going to get this country financially in good shape." How much money has this administration spent? Yeah, uh, how many more billions have we added to the deficit as a result of this yeah. president? Yeah, and that, and that tax cut, it, it busted the fucking budget. To Santa Claus. Yeah. 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 And, and what did it do? Did it, did it help the economy? I, I don't think well. the economy's doing great guns. Yeah. You know. It helped Jeff Bezos. If you want to measure yeah. the, the the economy based on how many jobs you know it's created every month, mm -hmm. you compare Trump Trump to Obama, and Obama had 
better job job creation in almost every single quarter compared to Trump. Listen, Obama was not a great president, but he yes, was, was a guy who, as in his by the second term, learned how to be president because mm -hmm. he cared about being president and he was a quick learner. Trump will have none of that. He doesn't care about knowing how to be president. He doesn't care to want to care about this. You know, it's funny, but uh, what's his name who wrote the book on him? Boy, my, my mind's just trash. Um, mm -hmm. the guy, Bob Woodward. Bob Woodward today was on uh, Nicole Wallace's show. And he said that years ago he interviewed Trump, and he said, "Why would you like what? What if you were president? What's the job of the president?" And he said to watch out for the American people. And he had this whole list of things, none of which he's lived up to now. Somewhere along the line, he lost his grip on what being a president was supposed to be, and he's done nothing for the American people. I mean, name one thing he's done. Uh, uh, I got uh, two thousand four hundred bucks. You got two thousand. Yeah, Did but... he have to sign that? Uh, yeah, I didn't get. To, so you can be bought, is what you're saying. You got how much? Ten. <laughs> his, he and his wife. He got two of the twelve hundred dollar things. But, but and he doesn't even live in this country. Yeah, but Warren Buffett got two billion dollars. You're gonna be bought off for twenty four hundred when somebody else is getting two billion. <laughs> At least don't feel bad What's about Warren Buffett because he gives it back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but okay, the Jeff Bezos then. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bezos doesn't pay it forward. No. No. Yeah. You know, he just tells us he's buying trucks that don't use gas. Yeah. Oh, very nice song. Uh, anyway, uh, so, so, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, tell me what he's done, folks. I mean, all uh, right. Yeah. Hey, there's a lot of things. Um, okay. One on. of the things I like that. He, yeah. I, I can tell you a lot of things. One of the things I like is that he, he's gone to other countries and basically told them, uh, you have to cough up more money for like NATO for your collective security and also South Korea, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's. So he's making them pay more to uh, That's bullshit. That is you know, bullshit. to have our troops there. Well, That's bullshit. What he's doing is pissing Why? off all of our allies. So we have no allies in Is it because I kinda do agree on that part. Like I, I'm not I'm not gonna be a Trump does everything wrong, but you know, to have NATO uh, chip in their fair share. But I think they have over yeah. the years. I mean it, it's all the other thing it, I'll tell you is it's all he doesn't take a salary. Bullshit! He spends ten times the salary going golfing every weekend. Right. Yeah. Every every time he goes golfing, well. <laughs> his own places he replaces. Let me ask you. Replenishes his okay. own salary. When, uh, salary. He sent, a salary. He sent a hundred thousand dollars to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. Uh -huh. Well, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Whoop de do. That's fine. Small but change. the fact is that um, uh, uh, the president's. Um, Mo, he number one, everything he does, including the toilet paper he uses, is paid for. Okay, it's not like he has huge expenses, and that's why he needs the four hundred thousand dollars a year. So it, he could very easily say, "I'm not going to take it. Let other people use it." Blah 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 blah. Or I'm giving it to mm -hmm. so and so. And he puts but, his own security up in his own resorts. Yeah, and then he puts his security. Uh, that we're paying yeah, for so he, up in his resort. Yeah. yeah. Prices for that, too. They so don't pay what they Just have. in that alone, in that alone, I think he's probably made the 400000 back. He's, he's made like $2 billion off of his hotels for, you yeah. know, anytime foreign, you know, dignitaries come into town, they stay at that hotel. Mm -hmm. He makes money off of that. Well, was it? Mike Pence went I, well, to this thing in London. And by the way, he does—he does make money. He does make money off of it because he doesn't put it in a blind trust. <clears throat> okay. His blind so, trust is 2020. Yeah. <clears throat> what? He, what? He won't be able to make money well, off of you know because his his people can't read, so he can't write a book after he's done. So give him give him some. Yeah. 
Can you imagine? They don't have somebody else. Well, I, I can hardly wait to see the Trump Library. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It'll have to, it'll have about five thousand oh, copies yeah. of his book. Yeah, bullet points and pictures. Yeah, <laughs> charts. The charts he used at that the that one interview yeah. with the black marker on <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the big print. Yeah, and what did he do that looked like a penis? Oh yeah, the That's where the, the where the uh, tornado back. was going to be or the uh, yeah. hurricane was going to hit. And everything he was strong about with those other countries to get more money back. He put he's putting all of us in danger by being a kiss ass to Putin, you know. Putin. Yeah. Yeah. But, they, they, that but, but that just whacked everything else out. Bree at least is being the devil's advocate here. Yeah. Let him continue. What else has he <laughs> yeah. done, Bree? Um. I I have to think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Well, it's uh, not like it exactly like oh and he did this and he did uh, that and he, he did this and he, he did didn't that. Didn't he renegotiate NAFTA? And he, it's called. It, it, uh, it was already a done USMC, deal by Obama. Yeah. He left office. It was already done. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. just he basically authorized it. Yeah. But his, he, put um, his name, he he put his name on a on Obama's thing. There's really. No oh, difference. I'll give you yeah, one. See, I'll give you one. A he has unionization. A, a peace accord between. Previously, uh, NAFTA uh, kept minute, unionization a, out of Mexico. A, a peace accord between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. They weren't at war, were they? No. Nope. So Actually, how do you sign a peace accord when there's no war? Hold, hold on a second. Bree was talking about unionization in Mexico. Unionization yeah. in Mexico is actually very strong. Go try to take a cab in Mexico and find out if you're a cab driver. NAFTA, NAFTA wanted to get rid of that. Mm, NAFTA... I, I've been to had, Mexico plenty of times when NAFTA was in. in NAFTA power. was only a bad idea. The unions for, were very strong. NAFTA was a bad idea because what it was was the European Union got together and created the European Union, which took a bunch of smaller economies and made them into one big huge economy, which was their way of kind of trying to equalize Compete. their uh, abilities uh, economically against the United States. So the United States, in order to say, well, we're going to meet it even bigger, did NAFTA. So we got Canada, we got Mexico, we got the United States, and we have those. The only thing we didn't do was what uh, Europe did with a common uh, denomination, you know. Uh, um, how about another thing? Oh, okay. Uh, how many wars did Trump start? How many wars, how did, many wars did he start? start? Do we oh, count the race? Are you talking about domestic <laughs> or foreign? War. Because there's a yeah, shift of domestic war wars there. he started. He did start a lot of domestic wars, yeah. 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 Well, you could just say those were already there. Well, how many, a, a, being oh, okay, being well, a Mexican-American, I feel like I am at how war. How many wars did Obama start? Zero. And he killed uh, one. Um, I'd have to look up. But I know he, he had some operations. No, he had operations, but so did we under war. under Trump. Zero. Because that was, that was when he killed uh, who? who? Bin Laden. Bin killed? Laden. Uh, Osama bin Laden? Oh, yeah, yeah. He did that. Yeah, he, he inherited the Iraq War, the Afghanistan War. Well, he, yes, he inherited from Bush. Oh, but Bush? I can tell you some that he did indirectly help. Uh you know, there is some truth to the, the, the fact that when we gave Iran back that money, they and, and we shook the, the hand. World court. They used that to fund Hezbollah. By the world it was court. their money. Court. To begin with, it was their money, Bree. Uh, and and uh, they, uh, the, uh, the world court said they had to give it back. Is that who said they had to give, we had to give uh, yeah, it back? I mean, it was, yeah. it was pretty much the, the, you know, consensus of the, you know, the world that's, you know, to to keep you know the you know to keep um, Iran from getting or making uh, a fucking nuclear bomb. It, it was money. Was part it, of the deal, it, you know. It, it, yeah, it was money, money in the American banks that we were holding on to and not releasing back to Iran mm -hmm. when they wanted it back. Because there was a power change in Iran at a certain point of time when we had their money. Yeah. 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 And we we got really we our hissy fit goes all the way back to when. <laughs> They threw out our dictator over there, the Shah, uh, yeah. the Shah of Iran. Oh, and we helped in the coup to get get rid of that guy back in '53. Their yeah. their original 
president. Remember back, uh, what was his name? Mossadegh. He nationalized all the oil companies and uh, Britain and the CIA, yeah. you know, got in there and had him, you know, deposed. Yeah. We put it, we made, we, uh, but, but there was, the there, there were really no wars uh, under Obama, you know. Um, uh, so I, I'd say that Obama probably, uh, he, he, he certainly, Obama created a slightly safer world than Trump has because Trump is annoyed and uh, so many other well, people that he's he's really caused a lot of disdain against do, us. Do you do you remember <clears throat> at the end of the Obama administration, everybody thought for sure we were going to war with North Korea, and since Trump, I don't even th I think they launched maybe one missile. They were launching a missile every week in during the Obama administration. I mean, it was really coming to yeah, we thought it was right going to be war. I don't think that realistic people thought no, that they, nobody they thought we were going North Korea yeah. because that would have lasted well, like Trump two weeks. Placated. No, no uh, North Korea. That war would have lasted two weeks. Yeah, all he was doing was saber rattling, and he yeah. knew, uh, even he knew he's not this much of an idiot. Trump, okay, yeah, I'll give you another one. No, wait a minute, let me finish. Trump, even yeah. even he knew uh, that he could not send one of those missiles to the United States because before it even got there. We will have shot it down, and there will be one coming in his direction that would annihilate North mm -hmm. Korea. So that was something he didn't want to do. He just wanted to posture. Okay. And uh, uh, North Korea almost got into a shooting war with South Korea last year yep. on the border. Remember that? Yep. yep. So, that's you know. Wrong. Yeah, that's but I'm curious. Bree, Bree was saying that. But by the way, by the way, that relationship between North more. Korea and Trump has completely evaporated. Yep, no more love there. No more love there. <laughs> you know, Bree, really? Bree's going to yeah. give us more. I want to hear. I'm curious. Okay, he he, he founded the Space Force. <laughs> uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Other countries yeah. have done this. So did Marvel. Did that, oh, wait a minute. So did Marvel Comics. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not the first really new military the service Force. since the Air Force in 1947. And what is it? And what is it? It it, uh, it who's in this? Well, it was it became a series on uh, on Apple Netflix. TV. Or was it, uh, Netflix? No, it was Apple TV or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was Apple TV. Yeah. No, when you can Netflix point to troops that are in the Marines or the Air Force or the Army, where are the troops that are in the Space Force? Yeah. Yeah. Can you, hey, uh, hey, they're just starting you, because Michigan is starting to bid for it. My area is starting to bid for the Space Force uh, <clears throat> headquarters. Yeah, right. Isn't why? Why? Is it, I, mean, I would say the Space Force should just be an outgrowth from the Air Force. It, and that's what well, it is. Did but. you watch the Netflix show? That's what they tried to say. Steve Carroll's character said, no way, it's its own thing. Yeah, right. So, uh, I, How about I, the First Step Act? The Ooh. First Step Act? What was that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that wasn't even comparable to what uh, Obama did, though. Because the First Step Act yeah. was, was, was for, uh, you know, prison, you know, people in prison and oh, okay. rehabilitate them and and it was a good thing, but mm -hmm. it wasn't even comparable to what Obama did. Well, he was also thinking of himself, too, because he may yeah. have to utilize that program someday. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't right. think he was thinking of himself. He was thinking of what's her name's ass, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. There's another one that you could, you could argue. I heard this recently in the news, that he has totally reshaped the federal judicial system, that he's made more appointments. Now, yeah, all right he said him. then Obama. So what was Obama doing? Like, why didn't Obama appoint because all those? Because he was Obama being blocked by all those. Obama did would, would not hold any hearings for him. Mitch no. McConnell blocked every fucking appointment Obama made. Yeah, that's why they couldn't get any any judges um, appointed, because of fucking McConnell. <laughs> He's been reshaping well. the judicial system to be right wing so hardcore. Yeah, uh, you know... It, that's not good. It should like be I steal your wallet uh, and say, how come you don't have any money? Yeah. <laughs> he claims, he, he, you know, he claims that he, you know, that he has defeated the ISIS caliphate. I mean, mm -hmm. that was a growing threat in Iraq. Uh, yeah, you know, actually, so, actually, that was. But the, they were so minuscule, they wouldn't have been defeated that was more, by anybody. That was, that, was, that was started under Obama. Okay. Yeah. And he 
and he turned over uh, the uh, the whole Syrian war to Russia. Yeah. So now, okay. Now let's let, let, let's let, okay for a second, Bree, and, and and thank you for bringing those things up because we like to hear all the wonderful things that he's done. Yeah. Now let's talk about the things he's done that were bad. Anybody want to start? <laughs> uh, uh, we just lost Bree. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anybody want to start? Uh, and I mean, you could go on and on. Well, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on know, a second. I don't like. Hmm? Say, say what? What Bree? Bree? He's also done tax reform. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it helped the rich. Know, and, it didn't and, help me. It didn't help me. People like me. <laughs> It, it has some have claimed that it, that you know that it has helped individuals. No, um, they were wrong though. They were wrong. Yeah, but more people had to pay. Well, twenty one percent make make three hundred thousand dollars a year, then you probably got a good you know a reduction yeah. on your taxes. If you made thirty thousand, forty thousand, or fifty thousand, you got what, maybe a hundred bucks. Look, if you got a hundred bucks, yeah. So I am a person who likes to get taxed throughout the year. So I get a tax return at the end of the year. My paycheck did go up, but my tax return at the end of the year went way down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You actually ended up paying more taxes. Yeah. So I was paying more. It, It really didn't help me at all. You made money in the short term, but you gave it back when you. Filed. And there's there's kind of your average American. Your income is probably yeah. average, right? Yeah. You know, uh, and I, I I am what the average American should be yeah. making. You shouldn't have been hit with higher taxes. No. You know, uh, my That's taxes. In fact, my taxes between my wife and I. My my taxes between my wife and I went up because of oh, because yeah. of of Trump. He deliberately did that so that you would think you were getting money back and you would think the tax cut was good for you until you actually filed for taxes the next year. Yeah. And then he found out, I was like, oh, shit. And the latest thing he wants to do is he wants to do away with the pay. He wants to do away with the payroll tax. You know what the payroll tax is? Social Security. He wants to do away with your old age safety net not mm-hmm. much of a safety living net under bridges huh so we'll be back to seniors living under bridges <laughs> listen I'm, this senior is about ready to one night you're going to see me doing the show from under a bridge <laughs> at, at the rate things are going you know it's just uh and of course look all the one thing that that beats anything else that he did there brie was his handling of coronavirus. Okay? Yep. Plain He's and draining simple. the swamp. Uh, yeah, he is draining, draining the swamp. The swamp. Yeah. He is the <laughs> fucking swamp. We, There's 200,000 fewer mouths to feed. You, you know, I understand that he, he was caught in the middle of a very terrible, terrible situation. But, be that as it may, he didn't do anything about it. And so, He's therefore... Right if we have 200,000 deaths, I'd say at least 150,000 of those are on his back and, fit, and is at his doorstep. And, and, and he doesn't even think about that. You know, he doesn't care. Well, for, for him and a lot of the, you know, the Trump followers, that's, it's okay. You know, it's not a bad thing to die because if you've lived a good life, read the Bible, you're, you're going to heaven. So... You get to meet your maker quicker. Yeah, but maybe you don't want to meet your maker yeah, really that's the, earlier that's the, than you should have. You know? that, that was the argument. I'm for glad George I'm an Everybody atheist. Said, George Bush is. Yeah. I'm an atheist. I don't want to hear that shit. I yeah. want to live. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, so, so, I mean, all I'm saying is that we can put all the little things he did, you know, because uh, as we all know, a stopwatch is right twice a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and yeah. and you can put that against the negatives, and the negatives are just, it's just like this, okay? You know, I mean, I can't see. Yeah, that. you mentioned about the kids in cages at the border. Kids in cages oh, yeah. at the borders. Yeah. Uh, uh, we can go on and on. I mean, things that have. I think what he's done is he has 
physically <clears throat> destroyed America and what America was considered to be, at least in its own mind. Uh, we're no longer this wonderful country that does wonderful things and helps people and is considerate and, you know, whatever. Bree? No, Alex, you give them way too much credit. If we are those things, then we are those things without Trump or with him. If he exposes, you know, he's a catalyst. He exposes the things in our system. I give him credit for exposing this. We need to go in there and fix these things for the future. Well, we it's a very, this a very, this a very good point because my feeling and my fr I'm frightened about it. Yes, I think Biden's going to win. I think he's going to win by a lot of people. I think that we're going to get the Senate. We're going to get the Congress. But it's only a matter of time before we get another Trump because yeah. this country was capable of voting this one into office. By Bree's logic, you yeah. could say uh, Hitler was good for Germany because he exposed the weakness in their system. By that logic, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, that don't make sense. Well, you know, so um, much time. Do, do you so think time. that Germany is a is a better country today? I mean, you know, the thing is, is that a lot of times, you know, and I I don't take that comparison lightly. I, I don't think Trump's anywhere near that. Uh, you know, he he is to a large extent an opportunist. And the Amer America gave him, through the system, gave them this opportunity. It's our fault as much as it is his. I agree. Oh, it's our fault. I mean, but what I'm saying is I'm worried that, yes, we uh, right now momentarily, because we're hurting, have learned our lesson. But how, have we learned our lesson eight years from now? You know, and is the next Trump going to be able to come along and do the same thing again, only worse? Yes, Tony. Yeah. You know, we know he's not a Hitler brain, but here's one thing that Biden should use. The Bob Woodward interview, when he had him on the audio for his interview, on the phone, mm -hmm. and he told him, Bob, you know how bad this virus is? Somebody sneezed in the White House, we all cleared out of the room. Two weeks later, Brie, in public, he's panning it down. And his whole rhetoric is, I don't want to panic people. Maybe you should have panicked people and said, wear a mask. He knew to tell them there how deadly it was. Well, they Added out of the room, so he's a, he might not have turned on the ovens, but he sure as hell didn't put a fire out. I'll tell you something, Mario Cuomo. I mean Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, wrote us read us the riot act here and said it's terrible, it's horrible. What did what happened? We cleaned up. Panic. We cleaned up. So, you know, telling people, he, he already had an example that telling the truth yeah. is a positive thing rather than a negative thing. So, you know, I mean, um, what can I say? You know. There's All I'm saying is... withholding mm -hmm. the truth and telling actual lies. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't told yeah. actual lies. It's cleared yeah. out of the room when they sneezed. You know what that tells me? And, and he continues to hold angry. these... He continues to hold liar. these uh, these crowd parties whatever rallies you know yeah. well listen there. listen the theme is playing so i have to call our antifa meeting to a close oh, uh, uh, and there is there is the mascot for antifa uh adrian got, uh, what are you what are you eating is that is that corn huh popsicle. ice cream ice cream yeah. okay the ice you, cream we scream we all scream, scream for, for ice, ice cream, cream. yes uh, ice cream, chillin', chillin', ice cream, chillin', chillin'. What kind chillin, of ice chillin'. cream is that? What is it's, it? Selena it, It's a, a, a boba drink. It's boba drink in a ice cream. Oh, I see. Alive? Right. And milk tea, milk tea ice cream with boba. A anyway, I want to thank that, I want to thank Jeff, and I want to thank Charlie, and I want to thank Brian, and I want to thank Adrian, and I want to thank Jason. Good to see you again, Jason. Good to see you. Uh, uh, John uh, and uh, Tony, always fine to see you. And Bree from uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, everybody, would you give a big wave goodbye? And I, as usual, give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go. And uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. You know, there's another citizen panel that's going to be assembling in just a few minutes. Right here with Jack Bishop on the intersection. He uses Skype, however. And that uh, address says Gabnet Live is what you call on that one. He'll tell you how to do it. Anyway, I, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. 
and stay safe and wear a mask. That everybody.